Hurricane Ian, which has devastated uh, this area pretty well, bad enough that we need help. So when it arrived here, the eye of the storm skirted Fort Myers and then inland right into Inglewood. And the eye actually stood over us for about nine hours. I realized that there was a good chance that the house was gonna go and we weren't gonna make it. My wife, who was crying uncontrollably, I put her in the closet with the mattress on top of her, and I gave her the Bible. And I told her to turn to Psalms and just start reading and praying. After a while, there was nothing else that you know we could possibly do except pray and hope. And I got in the closet on top of her. She was she was uncontrollably emotional and I just got on top of her and tried to tell her that I'll try to protect her as much as I could. The Lord shed his light because nine hours later the storm took off and we were still sitting there alive. We are at Lakeside Lutheran Church in Venice, uh, Florida. We have been asked by the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod to open up a base camp here to serve the residents of Venice, Port Charlotte, Englewood, North Point, Punta Gorda and Rotunda West that were impacted by Hurricane Ian that struck the Gulf Coast September 29th. Uh, the winds, they, it seemed like they would never stop. Many trees blew over. My front tree completely got uprooted and fell on the power line. The wind was so very loud and I didn't even hear this huge tree fall down because the winds were so loud. I made myself a safe room in the closet, but I couldn't stay in there. <laughs> I had to see what was going on. So I went and laid in my bedroom in the bed and I sang this song about um, when the tempests roar and God is our rock of ages and he will be with us. I sang that song and the last words are in peace I go and I felt very peaceful while I was watching all the trees blow. As we go through a huge hurricane like this, one of the life lessons that you learn hands on, even though it comes to us way early in the Bible is love your neighbor. What do we do next? And God's hand sends the people of Lurt. In a Florida situation like this or a tornado alley, you really have to love your neighbor, help them, serve them, and care for them. God calls his church together, hand to hand, life to life, soul to soul, to touch people's lives and bring them that, that peace that can only come to the hands of God. And so we come in as the rescue team, the healers, the givers, and, and the good news of Christ that this storm too shall pass and we rise up stronger in the name of Christ Jesus to even do more wonderful things after we get through this. Uh, we're here today because of a, a disaster, but we're here today because of the Lord's grace and, and uh, we'll get through this. Uh, it's not gonna stop us. We continue to worship. We continue to grow together and I think relationships are becoming stronger within the congregation and reaching out to our neighbors here in the community by, uh, by showing the love of Christ even in the times when uh, you know maybe it's not as easy to do that as at other times. At this point now we're kind of gone past that initial triage stage and now we're looking to how are we going to uh, recover from all of this and to have LERT and LCC uh, come down and, and help us. It's, it's amazing that folks from all over the country, maybe even all over the world, would, would care enough about their brothers and sisters in Christ. And It's not about us. It's not about this church. It's about the church. It's about lifting high the cross. It's about uh, bringing Jesus to, to everywhere in the world. And yeah, we've got a big challenge on our hands because of this, uh, this devastation, this major hurricane. The thing that is most important is continuing the ministry. And I think it's most important even more so because we have so many people who are, are doing this while still lost in darkness. I keep telling my congregation two years from now, two years from now, we're gonna look back, maybe even sooner, and we're gonna say, we didn't see that coming. How awesome is God that he did this for us out of what we looked at a disaster. But we know, we know that all things work together for the good, for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. And that's us. You, you want to do 
definitely want to help others and be a blessing to others. Right now, the only thing I can do is pray, which I spend a lot of time praying for others. Now I want to thank all the volunteers. I think you do. It's so wonderful to know that people care about you that don't even know you. It's so much easier when you know God is leading you and guiding you and sending you people like yourselves to hell. And I could barely keep it together that God would do this, that he would send these Samaritans, these wonderful people to come in, not only to help us, but to pray with us. To, to hold our hand if that's what we need, to give us a hug if that's what we need, to fix our roof if that's what we need. This is just amazing that God has set his system up to bring this and make this happen. And that is a, a, an amazing thing. As soon as you step into our lives in the name of Christ, you become immediate family that we can see and be with. And thank you for opening your lives up for being our family in the midst of struggle and trial. So we just want to thank you for your generosity and supporting us as we are down here for three weeks to help residents affected by the hurricane. Uh, without your donations and support, we would not be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus to those that are hurting down here. We love God. We're called according to his purposes, but ultimately we love because he first loved us.